Hey guys, what's up? It's the Snake Dude 1814 here, and in this week's video, I'm gonna cover a pretty major part of the reptile hobby. And as many of you guys know, you're gonna be owning reptiles as pets or amphibians, and some of that could not be possible thanks to reptile breeders. Now, in this week's video, I'm gonna be covering Boreas Exotics, who is one of my personal favorite breeders because they specialize in tropical agamid lizards. My favorite group of lizards because my Chinese water dragon is in that group. Primarily, you're looking at lizards like water dragons, sailfin dragons, and he's got a bunch of other cool stuff like basilisks. So without further ado, let's take a look at Boreas Exotics. Hi, I'm Ryan from Boreas Exotics. I specialize in the larger lizards and agamids section for our company. This lizard right here is a Chinese water dragon. It's the first water dragon and first larger arboreal lizard that I ever purchased. Her name's Mama. This lizard right here is Papa and he is the male that is paired with this female. Both of these were purchased over five years ago now, and these two are a breeded pair, and you will see them all over the Boreas Exotics Instagram. So what really got you into reptiles, especially your tropical agave section? Well, what really got me into reptiles was watching Steve Irwin growing up. I was a crocodile hunter kid. Um, I always got super into watching uh, the way that he interacted with large, dangerous animals. Uh, obviously, these are not so large and dangerous, but um, they just it got me into the exotic side of the world, and I really, really, really thoroughly enjoyed that. So, other than your two water dragons that you have here, what are some of your dream species that you definitely want to work with? Um, most of my dream species kind of come from South America. Uh, so the basilisk family, anyone who's ever heard my name knows that I am crazy for basilisks. Um, and after you've been here, you've seen how many basilisks that are here. You do have quite a few. Um, so I have two out of the four species, two dream species that I don't have are basiliscus basiliscus and basiliscus gallaritis. Um, the basiliscus basiliscus is actually the true form of the brown basilisk, which is the largest species. Um, reaching up to three to four feet, and then the Galleritis is a red and green basilisk with a moon-shaped uh, crest on the top of the head. So as we were saying a little bit ago, I'm huge into the basilisk species, if you couldn't tell by the hat. Uh, right over here, we do have a grow-out tank for imports. So this right here was a Costa Rican import that I did last Monday. So all these lizards will stay in here until, it, they, until they are fully observed as being 100% healthy and okay. Um, and we'll explain the differences between Costa Rican and Nicaraguan import localities for the Basiliscus plumifrons. Right down here, as we move along, we've got a full-grown Basiliscus plumifrons male, who is quite pissed off that we're taking so many photos and videos of him today. But this is the enclosure that I have for him. Um, I use plywood for almost all my enclosures. Um, I use a lot of fake plants, I also use a lot of driftwood that you'd otherwise see in aquariums and stuff like that so they can take the water without breaking down. All of it is pre-soaked um, and I love to use a lot of UVB. And then right back here we have a Costa Rican line of Basiliscus plumifrons, the Revan line, which is probably my favorite basilisk on the planet for this guy. So this was a rescue, he has two very bad eyes. Um, he was found in southern Florida. A friend of mine sent me a text and was like, hey, would you want to take on a project? And I was like, sure. And then he was sent to me in a box, and he has been happy ever since. I was told that he was blind, he would never be able to breed, never be able to really find his food. And within a couple weeks of just working on him, finding his food and hand feeding him, he started eating on his own. And I mean, he's bred some of the most beautiful babies that I've ever seen in my entire life. And just to kind of give you better he's, view. He's a good looking male. Jeez. The blues on him especially are oh, yeah. very, very lovely. And what I've tried to do is just kind of dumb down his environment just to make it more flat level. There are some sticks in here. Um, however, most of, not everything is kind of just on a flat plane or a very slow incline so he doesn't impale himself on a stick trying to run around because his vision is very poor. Um, it's amazing though that Despite his lack of vision, as you say, the fact that, you know, he's still able to breed and keep those gorgeous colors going because he oh, is yeah. beautiful. So you were saying earlier about Nicaraguan and Costa Rica lineages. What does that exactly entail? So all it is is two separate localities. Um, 
basilisks are everywhere from Panama to literally Costa Rica. There's a whole lot of different uh, localities that occur from there. The biggest differentiating force that I can see between them is that the Costa Rican imports come in with a solid emerald green color to them. Um, whereas what I've seen with Nicaraguan is they have a washed out blue kind of color to them, which are the most oh, commonly geez. seen ones that you will find in captivity. The rare trait is when you see a hybridized group where you'll start to see some black barring that kind of mixes in and stays. A lot of times that's really hard to find in the trade. Um, right down here, this guy's another hybrid. So he is a Nicaraguan slash Costa Rican cross, but he harbors a lot more than Nicaraguan uh, traits. That's why you kind of see that faded green color. He is shedding right now, but he doesn't have a whole lot of the black barring. The one thing that I will say is it tends to be the Nicaraguans display very, very modest crests compared to the Costa Ricans, which you can even see in the females. <clears throat> Like all these in here for the most part are female basilisks, but they all have hoods on their, on their necks. And the one that I can say displays it the best is probably not going to be happy about me bothering her, but it's right there. The other thing that the Costa Rican locality does show in contradiction to its Nicaraguan counterpart is the fact that they do develop red eyes, whereas the traits that you see with Nicaraguans are generally a yellowy orange. Um, and I have found that only these true emerald green basilisks have the red eye trait. This aggressive little beast here is a Basiliscus vitatus female. They tend to always be wild caught in the trade. They are the poor man's basilisk if I do say so. Um, they are called the brown basilisk incorrectly because these guys are actually the striped variety that are now invasive in Florida. So you'll see them for three to seven dollars each but I still think that they're a lot of fun. They're actually the smallest species out of the four. Probably the most bitey, too. Uh, as we'll see if we can get a male out here. There he is. Oh, I know. He's about to be on the other side in about two seconds. Yeah, there he is. Okay, 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 okay. Okay. Oh, I know. They are definitely defensive little guys, for sure. Flighty as heck, yeah. Very beautiful animal though. He's got a nice big head crest, striped down the back. You said he's got a abnormally large um uh, sail on his sail back on his for back. a vitatus. Normally they're pretty flat backed. But he is one of the few that actually has a nice crest. And then on their bellies, too, for the males, you'll see a salmon color to them. Look at that. Very interesting. And the males for the vitatus will actually have blue eyes sometimes too. He doesn't carry the trait though. And away they go. So as far as um, different species that I work with, the larger agamids, the sailfin dragon has always been one of my favorite species. Just because of the look, because of the fact that they have a very, very nice demeanor once you work with them. This is actually an imported animal. It's not completely crazy. You can touch it. It's not puffing. It's not trying to bite you. They are always going to have a little bit of a flighty response when they're younger. This is a juvenile uh, female. Possesses a blue eye trait, which means... Um, when you put them outside and expose them to natural UV, the white in there will actually start to turn blue. Very beautiful animals. Um, I love how there are the four different species on mainland, um, and you can hybridize them, and there's two great breeders that are very good friends with Scott Corning and John Steele who have worked with all the different species, worked on tribridizing them, hybridizing them, and doing everything in between. My favorite are the integrates, so the mutts of the group. Just they seem to be the most docile, relaxed, I want to hang out with you big agamid lizard that you can find that is in that arboreal side. I have three on hand now. Two of them are integrates and then the other one was produced by John Steele and it's a tribrid. So it's an Amboin Pustulatus Weberi cross. This one in particular, it's kind of a guess what it is, but you can definitely see the Weberi in it, which is all that the black markings that are in there. Um, it's probably also across a little bit of Amboin as well. But just super laid back, mellow, beautiful lizards. Uh, another thing I love about them is that you can keep them mostly vegetarian, which is awesome. Um, it saves on the budget and just kind of keeps them mean, lean, and a fighting machine.
So overall, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you again, Ryan, for letting me interview for this. No Obviously, problem. he's got some amazing agamids. Look at this water dragon. I might steal it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Definitely be sure to check out Boreas Exotics down in the link below. I have left links to their Facebook and Instagram. So definitely, if you are in the mood to buy some quality captive bred agamids, hit them up. You can clearly see the setup behind us is taller than I am. And Ryan here. We're, and we're six both feet tall over plus. six foot. Yeah, exactly. Yep. There you go, Mama. So, pretty much, thank you guys for watching. Thank you again, Ryan. Yeah. Until then, this has been the Snake Dude 1814, and I will see you guys in the next video. Adios.